please welcome Christine Osborne. Good morning, everybody. I'm, I have, if you want to open up your little dragonfly and put it on your finger, you can put it on your toes, your nose, whatever, computers, wine bottles. This actually is a magic dragonfly, and yes, it does make magic happen. And I'm serious about that. So look at this. You can put it wherever you want in your home, in your office, and you can remember today. And you can remember about quirks in your story and serendipity. And I'm going to explain a little bit about that. And I want to thank even and Stacy for having me here. And I have some magic makers in front. I have Sandy, y'all raise your hand, Helen, and Ellie. And Ellie put this wonderful presentation together. And I've done it many, many, many times because um, it's a story that needs to be told. And everybody's got a story, y'all. And your story is you. And your story starts out with quirks. And the reason I say that is um, Quirks are really, really, if you're, you're trying to figure out what is a quirk and why does that relate to me and why is that important, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story and it's mainly my quirks and it makes the magic happen. It makes you who you are. It makes you different in your life and you're going to live your life truly. You're going to be true to who you are and you're, everything that you do in your relationships at home, in your office, if you're true to who you are, you feel comfortable, you're happy. It will make the magic happen, it'll make the serendipity happen. So quirks are kind of that peculiar stuff. I want everybody to close their eyes for a second. Think about how weird you are, I'm serious. <laughs> Think about how weird you are. Think about things that you love doing that nobody else likes doing that your friends look at you and think you're just crazy. I want you to think about that. Think about two things, okay. Open your eyes. Okay, we're gonna go back to that at the very end. Um, Okay, serendipity, can you go back one, Ellie? Serendipity is, is kind of like that chance encounter that he talks about, but it's not just that. It's that magic that happens every day to me. It's that magic that happens every week to me. You can ask my staff that work with me. And it li it's like you're thinking something and then it happens. The people in this room, the Redux organization, the Creative Mornings organization, this is important for y'all right now. I see a lot of young people in here. Low Country Local First was important for me. But this is something where your roots are, where you're growing roots, when you're starting off with your work and your career, or you're maybe on your second or your third. But that stuff is the stuff. These friends are the ones, the people sitting beside you are the ones that are gonna make that magic happen in the future. Um, and serendipity, it just occurs, but you're the one who, you're creating that and you know when it happens. The universe has things going on that we do not understand. I don't understand spiritually everything and I don't claim to, but I know that there's a bigger power above us and everybody believes something different and that's great, but I know that that power above us does make a difference in my everyday life. Um, Chase is my grandbaby. I have two grandbabies and Chase is very weird. He runs around naked. I like running around naked. I'm sorry, I'll say it right now. My husband's like, what are you doing, Christine? Go, go put some clothes on people on the street, way down the street. He thinks he can see me through the window. I'm like, yeah, right. So, um, but Chase likes, you know, he's, he's running through the house on a little, you know, on a little scooter and he's naked and he loves it. And um, he also, of course, my son took him on his first boat ride and he's sitting there with a beer and that was the first picture he sent me. I'm like, yeah, like I can really post that. Um, and then the next thing is, where did I come from? My parents are German, y'all. They immigrated from Germany. My father fought in the Luftwaffe. After the war, World War II, they ended up going to Maine. They thought Maine was America, which it is, but it was very, very cold very cold and they ended up I was born there my sister was born there then they moved down no air conditioning in the car to Clemson South Carolina in the heat of August and they ended up in Clemson and I grew up in Clemson a little idyllic town it was 1200 people 2400 students we all knew each other but we were the nerdy German family nerdy 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 and I'm talking look you can go back Ellie I am wearing a, a dental clite. Yeah, no, it's not very attractive. Then I'm wearing a book bag, you know, right here on my back, rucksack. 
And then my shoes, luckily I got to wear these shoes, but usually they were brown Stephon shoes. And I wore this, I wore this till I was in sixth grade. You can imagine what I had to persevere and go through. So you learn your character at that time. You learn to schlep that off. But I was very nerdy. I loved being a Girl Scout. I loved, you know, I like being organized. I like doing the little badges down there. My, Yeah, these are nerdy, weird pictures. But I mean, this is who I was. I liked doing it. I liked painting the little leaves and drawing, you know. And friends in my neighborhood, um, Ellie, we're gonna stay on this for a little while, um, friends in my neighborhood, they would all come ride, and I'd, I wouldn't do that. I would go look, sit at the feet of older elderly women in my neighborhood, and I would end up learning about things. They were so wise, and I'd help them. You know, they were older. I'd help them get their washing machine, you know, the laundry done. I'd help fold stuff. I'd help get their glass of water, help set their table, help them even cook. I was always helping. I liked to help people because it made them smile, and it made me feel good helping people. And I used to babysit a lot, and I used to end up redoing my room. I was very organized. When I went to, to high school, I was the editor of the annual, and I was very organized. But before that, in the sixth grade, I was one of those teacher pet people, and I would help the kids during recess. I wouldn't even go out there. I would help the kids during recess, probably because they were teasing me with my rucksack. But I ended up helping the teachers. I, I would help the students who had trouble learning, and I would help them. Then I would end up organizing paper clips, everything in the desk for the teacher. They love me. And one of the teachers was named Louise Smith. Louise was a very special person. She always made me feel really, really good. And she always encouraged me, no matter how nerdy I was. And she was one of the special people in my life. And I ended up starting to work at 10 years old. Yes, my mother was German. So my mother was like, you must do this and you must do that and you must be a career and go get tested for a career and I tested for a ferry boat driver. Well, ferry boat drivers, there's not very many except if you're driving from here in Charleston over here to Mount Pleasant on the, on the thing. So I ended up testing again and then ended up occupational therapy. So my mother ended up taking me to be an occupational therapist to, on down to medical university every year when I was age 14. And we're in Clemson, we're driving down to Charleston, I'm meeting with the Dean of Occupational Therapy, and she's like, um, why are you here, you know, you're not even 18. <laughs> and, and so I was accepted at the Medical University in Occupational Therapy, I went to college Charleston, met my wonderful husband, but I ended up, you know, it was very interesting, my passion was Down Syndrome children. And I ended up working at Camp Hope Camp Hope was awesome. They were like my family. Ever since I was 10, I was a camp counselor. Some of my very, very favorite campers were from Charleston, South Carolina. They'd come from Ladson Center. They'd come from just all over the state, and they were residential. And I would talk about camp all the time throughout the year. I would talk about Down syndrome children because they're angels. They're awesome. That's why I really wanted to become an occupational therapist. And whenever you have a passion, you know how your eyes glaze over, the person you're talking to, your eyes don't glaze over, but theirs do. That's what happens when you have a passion. And you know that that's your passion because the people you're talking to, they're like, and then you lost them. You know. Okay, that passion was what fueled me. And it was very, very, very important in my life. And it got me to Charleston. I met my wonderful husband. We've been married 36, seven years, something like that. I think it's going to be 37 this year, just when I graduated from occupational therapy school. And when I graduated, I asked them, I said, why did you accept me? I was the youngest person you've ever accepted in this program. They said, the wrath of Margaret Stiebel. <laughs> so, you know, you never know. But then they were like, we're just joking. But they really weren't. But anyway, so... <laughs> I ended up getting married, and Wayne's a guy, and he's from Charleston, very conservative, Charleston, pluff mud, he's not going to move, you know, his feet are stuck in the mud, that's just how they roll, so, and y'all know that's, that's true, so, um, then all of a sudden, Ellie, you can back up, um, I ended up working, and my dream job was at Ladson Center, and I got offered the job, and I'm like, yes, this is my life, it's structured, I do all this, you know, just like a little German girl should, and... We went on our honeymoon. When I came back, the job was frozen. I'm like, the only occupational therapy job in the city of Charleston, South Carolina, was at the Medical University on the 10th floor in psychiatry. And I'm like, okay. 
And I remember I walked in and Ray Young looked at me and she was an amazing boss. I learned a lot about management from her. And she's like, if there becomes a Down syndrome job open down the road, are you going to take that? And I was like, mm, no, ma'am, I'm going to stay right here. I was like, but, you know, I really didn't know what I was going to learn. At that place, at Medical University, I learned a ton. I ended up raising my hand one day. She goes, who wants to do a cart with, for children down on the cancer, you know, oncology, for arts and crafts, games, all that sort of stuff, toys? Who wants to do that? She says, volunteer, you're not getting paid. I raised my hand. I'm like, that sounds really cool. Met some really interesting people. There's a reason I'm telling all, you all all this. Then all of a sudden, a job came open in Charleston for Southern Pine Psychiatric Hospital. So I sat there, I said, well, I can start an OT program for a hospital. I can do this. This is great. I went and interviewed, and the guy in there was so nerdy. Oh, my God. He was nerdier than me. He was sitting at a table, and he was looked at me, and he goes, how many workbenches do you want, Christine, your occupational therapy thing? And I said, in my head, I was like, this guy is so nerdy. Oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? And I looked at him, I said, I am so sorry. I'm not your person. I said, I am not your person. I said, I do assertiveness training. I'll do stress management. I'll do relaxation therapy. You know, this is kind of what you really, really want in psychiatry now for folks to learn how to cope. You know, we were working with children, adolescents, and adults. And I'm, you know, I'm getting up to leave. And I'm like, but thank you for the interview anyway. And I walked out. I'm like, God, thank God I don't ever have to see him again. That's weird. He's weird. So then I got a phone call the next day. And it was the gentleman. And his name was Daniel K. Morrissey from Sullivan's Island. And he said, I want to offer you the job. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, we didn't have a really great interview. And he goes, yes, we did. He said, you're the only person who told me the truth. And what I want to say is, that was my partner at Wonderworks. I worked with him for 10 years. We made magic happen at Southern Pine Psychiatric Hospital. You don't know who the people are that, who will be in your life in the future. They will drop in your life. They may be sitting beside you right now in this room. This organization will end up being some of your best friends in the future. And I know that. I don't know how I know it, but I know it. So you want to participate, you want to get involved in stuff, and you want to be true to what you're talking about. So Dan and I ended up, we're sitting there, and, and we worked in the hospital, and lo and behold, we ended up doing, I ended up doing program development. I started a head injury unit. Then they're like, well, you do marketing. Dan said, came to me, and I said, I don't know anything about marketing. He said, neither does the guy who's doing it. <laughs> so I said, okay, let me investigate it. Let me figure it out. We did a marketing plan, and all of a sudden, the hospital started having a waiting list. Well, guess what? We were their cash cow. The corporate office had 23 other hospitals, and they needed money, and we were their number one profit maker, so they sold us. And we used to go to the corporate office and do dog and pony shows to the other administrators, and when we did that, there was a toy store across the street. Everybody go drink, and Dan and I wouldn't. We go to these toy stores, this one toy store. I remember I walked in, I'm like, darn, I wish Charleston had something like this. I have a family, Dan had a family, we all had children, all that, it was great. But hospital got sold. Dan was gone immediately. They told me I had to move to Macon, Georgia. I said, my husband's from Charleston, he is not moving, his feet are in the mud. So then I ended up sitting there trying to figure out what am I gonna do? And I knew the hospital was not ethical. It was in my gut. When you have something in your gut and you understand it and you realize that something's wrong, you get yourself out of there. That's the one thing I'll tell you. I sat there and made a plan and you know your gut's right. 60 Minutes came calling about, I left. 60 Minutes came calling about the next week and then they shut them down nationwide, the new hospital corporation. And that hospital was shut down. Um, but I ended up, Dan called me and he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing a little bit of contract work for the old hospital corporation. And he said, well, let's, remember how we looked at that toy store? He said, I kinda wanna do this. And I sat there and I said, you know, we worked our asses off, excuse me, and he said, I said, we worked our asses off, you know, we worked so hard and then why? We got fired. I mean, Dan was like, I got fired, you know? I was like, there's something wrong with this picture. Let's be an entrepreneur. Let's, you know, we've worked together well, let's do it. 
So we came up with this brilliant idea. My, my husband and my, his wife said, what do you want to do? And Dan said, my passion is telescopes. And I said, well, my passion is science. And our spouses were, y'all are nerdy, and nobody's going to shop there. <laughs> so they were like, will you go do Nature? Nature Company was big. Not everybody in here remembers Nature Company, but some of us do. So Nature Company was big. So we did Science and Nature Store. Well, that sounds good, but where are you going to get the money? So go knocking, walking down Charleston, you know, we're sitting there and we're going to one bank. No, too nerdy. Concept's never going to work. Another bank. No, too nerdy. And they were really honest. They were like, no, this is, concept's not going to work. Wonder where it's not going to work. Went to five banks. Everybody told me no. Went into the sixth bank, opened the door, and all of a sudden, I'm sitting there, and Frank Smith, Louise Smith, my sixth grade teacher's husband, is sitting right there in Charleston, South Carolina, at the banker's desk. Says, Christine Steeple Osborne, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm going to start a new business. He goes, not a problem. He said, my wife still talks about you. Anything you do is going to be successful. What do you want the check written for? And that's how WonderWorks started. My nerdy little paperclip skill <laughs> resonated into a large cash outlay for WonderWorks getting started. Then the magic started happening. We started doing telescopes. We were the number one telescope dealer in the southeast. We opened up. We had another store. Then all of a sudden, you can go to the next one, Al. All of a sudden, this is my business partner, Dan. He calls me and he goes, I need to meet you. And it was, we'd been doing the store about 14 years. And he said, I need to meet you early in the morning before work. And I went, okay. And walked in. And he looked at me and he goes, I have pancreatic cancer and I'm dying and I won't be here in a year. And I looked at him and I'm like, I thought he was joking. I was like, we'll go get chemo and radiation. That's what everybody else who has cancer does. And he goes, no, you don't understand. The pancreatic cancer you do not survive from. And he was true. 13 months he was, he was gone. And we had the best time. He was gone for four months with chemo. He sustained for about nine more months. He would sit there and we, he would sit at the end of the, the Wonderworks you know, office in Mount Pleasant and he would be breathing heavy or something. And I'm sitting there doing orders and and I'm like, will you please stop breathing heavy? It's bothering me. And he's like, Christine, I, th I said, you sound like you're dying, so just stop. And he would start laughing. He's like, you're the only one who can make me laugh. But he ended up passing. And before he did, he said, Christine, get rid of every telescope. And I said, why? He said, it's not a large moneymaker. It's my passion. He said, you find your passion. He said, you open your eyes. And magic will continue to happen. You will continue to have this business successful. And sure enough, I got rid of the telescopes. That's a third of our sales floor in a couple of our stores. And in walked Jamie Haley, low country, local first. She tells me, and this is during, during the time, those 13 months, she says, you're not a mom and pop. I said, explain it to me. She said, you're economically powerful. Every dollar you spend on local business makes three for the local economy. If you buy something locally made and sell it in your store, it makes, every dollar makes six. So lo and behold, I pulled up and started up a local section. And I kind of, and I, and I had that in my head and I wasn't planning on doing a local section, but something about it resonated with me. And I ended up, she said, will you be the chairperson for the 10% shift? We want to include and, and educate Charleston that 10% of what you spend needs to be local. And Charleston was one of the pioneers in the nation for lo lo localism. They really were. They were the only Bali Business Alliance for Local Living Economies chapter in the South down here. Warren Buffett was a huge part of that. And I said, how do you want me to do this? She said, I need you to get about 500 or 800 people in Marion Square, including all the mayors. 
I said, what do I need to do? She goes, well, you can go to these business owners. She goes, there's one named Marianna Hay downtown on Charleston. She owns Krogan's. If you get her, you'll get all the Charleston peeps will follow her. She's like a duckling person, you know, and they all go down. And Marianna Hay at Krogan's is the number one. It's the, it's the oldest jewelry, it's the oldest retail establishment in all of Charleston. I mean, it's back to the Civil War, pretty much. So I go into Jamie, uh, I go down and I go to Krogan's and we ended up having like about a thousand people attend, but I go down to Krogan's and I open up the door and there stands Marianna Hay. Marianna looks at me, she goes, what are you doing here, Christine? I said, what are you doing? And I said, how's Georgie? He was my favorite camper at Camp Hope. Those eight years I worked at camp for Down syndrome. She said, this is my family business. And I said, I have Wonderworks. And Marianna made a huge, huge difference in my business. I said, I'll do anything you want me to do, Marianna. Marianna said, I'll do anything you want me to do. I said, I'll help you with any fundraising, anything. So Marianna ended up, we did Low Country Local first. And then the day after Dan passed, in walks to my business, Christian Royal Pottery, Down Syndrome. And he stands there with this piece of pottery. Remember, Jamie had just told me about localism. And he's looking, and he can't even look at me. And he's like, will you sell this? He's trainable, not educable. They kicked him out of school because he couldn't learn three words and memorize them in two years. His parents owned Kiowa Island. He's the sixth child of that family. Amazing family. Mother pulled him in, homeschooled him, planted plants, taught him that, gave him seeds. She did pottery, not great. He learned about pottery and took it to a whole nother level. Ellie, if y'all can pass these around. These are unbelievable pieces. His fingers are webbed with downies. And see, here I am talking about downies. They're angels. And y'all are, some of y'all are glassing over your eyes. But he ended up doing this pottery. And we did a whole pottery section. I said, come on, I'll bring it to me. I'm going to sell it. We got him in five galleries. PBS, well, we ended up, Joni Erickson from California came, her production company came down here and filmed him. They did a documentary called In the Potter's Hands. It won the Silver Telly Award nationally, and he's on PBS right now. Christian Royal Pottery. Christian Royal, he's amazing. Then, the week after that, here comes John Gant. Mentors, y'all, I'll tell you this right now. If you can get any mentors in your life, get them. If there are people you want to mentor you, do it. Ask them. Look at the people who are around you. They will be your mentors, too. There was a, so after Dan was my mentor, after he passed away, John Gant, he's in his 80s, he's walking down the sidewalk at West Ashley by my store. He has this in his hand. It was in a cover. I said, what you got there? He goes, Charleston hooker. I got me a hooker. I said, ooh, I want one of those. This is awesome. I said, what do you do with it? He says, it's, number, it's, a, it's grilling. You grill. You know, you don't burn yourself. Flip hot dogs, chicken, steaks, whatever. I didn't know that John Gant was the number one lantern maker in the United States. I didn't know that this elderly gentleman ended up developing all the lanterns at the White House. I didn't know that he had retired and he lived down on the battery. I just knew I liked elderly people. <laughs> and I knew that they were wise and I enjoyed them. So I became really, really close to John. He checked up on me after Dan left. Checked up on me every week, every two weeks, every three weeks. And I even, I remember John was not looking well and I said, you are not looking well, what's going on? He goes, you are so rude, Christine. And I said, well, what is going on? You're losing weight. And he goes, well, I don't know. I've just lost 30 pounds in two weeks. I said, next time you lose a, you lose a pound, you can go to the doctor. So he ended up having liver cancer. And I called him and I said, I want to come see you. He goes, you just want to see my house on the battery. I said, no, I don't. I don't care about your house on the battery. I said, but I do care about you. So I went over to, the, to his house. And when I'm going to his house... I look at him, I'm like, I don't believe this. And I turned around, I said, my husband proposed to me right here. And John Gant was huge in my life. We helped him develop 
um, a whole line of products. This is called the Charleston Hooker. It's the number one grilling tool in Charleston. We sell thousands a year. There's a butt grabber. Keep your warm butts off the cold ground, that is. It's, and then there's also a shrimp zipper. Really pretty cool. John was amazing. And he did end up passing, but he was an unbelievable mentor, an unbelievable friend. I looked at him, I said, I can't handle West Ashley, it's so tiny. I can't breathe in here, it's claustrophobic. And he put his hands on my shoulders and he steered me to the left. He said, you're storing stuff in this place that's empty, we're in a recession, just go talk to your landlord and tell him that you wanna bust down the wall and you want, and I'm like, thank you. Thank you for telling me my answer. He was absolutely amazing. Then all of a sudden, the children started coming. And I don't say no. I say yes. Yes is a very powerful word. Opening up yourself allows magic to happen. This little girl came to me and she goes, Harper Drolet, 10 years old, has more of a legacy than any of us will have ever in this, in this room. She ended up coming to me. She goes, you are not doing a good job, pixie cut. She goes, I am at Medical University. There is a toy cart toy cart. I'm like, bing, 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 bing. What did I do when I was at Medical University working there 30 years ago? She goes, there's a toy cart and it doesn't have enough toys on it. And we need every child at Medical University gets a free toy on Thursdays. Do you know why it makes us happy? She goes, and then our whatever levels, serotonin levels go up and we're happy and our parents are happy and the nurses are happy and the doctors are happy and it's a happy day on that day. She goes, but we only have like 200 toys or 300 we need. I said, how many? She said, 10,000. What are you going to do to make that magic happen? And I said, what are we going to do? She goes, there's this thing called Facebook. So she goes, I said, okay, let's do it. I said, for every like we do, we'll tell your story. For every like we get, we'll donate a toy. I said, I'll do it seven days. First day, bunch of likes. Second day, 1,000 likes. Third day, all the way up to the seventh day, 10,000 likes, 10,000 toys. That's what Harper Dry Lay wanted. She called me and she goes, I want to see them all. I said, okay. So I ended up going and I'll, we always pay our bills. Even if you have to go get a loan from Frank Smith, we pay our bills. And um, we ended up getting 10,000 toys. And she sat there with the president of Medical University and it was absolutely wonderful. So now that sustained that cart for eight years. This one child, I went the other day to Port Gout and talked to a bunch of sixth graders. She didn't go to Port Gout. I said, how many of y'all have heard of Harper Drolet? Three fourths of the room raised their hand. Of children, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. It's amazing. So Harper has a legacy. One child can make a major difference. It was absolutely wonderful. There's John Gant. That was John Gant right there, right there. And Mayor Riley called Harper the mayor of Medical University. She's really pretty cool. So they now have a, after she passed, like about, I think it was like three months later or whatever, she passed and they were like, we're gonna do a tennis tournament and find the cure for rhabdomyosarcoma, sarcoma, soft cell tissue cancer, which is what she had. And I'm sitting there going, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. For after two years of that research, one person that we all funded, and we continue doing it, they found a DNA strand, and then just there's now they're doing testing with medicine right now for it. So Harper's probably going to get her wish. Okay, what's next? So the magic. What I'm saying is the magic ends up happening. The magic is your quirks. The magic is you. The magic is your nerdiness. The magic is all that stuff that you're kind of embarrassed to talk about. When you get older, you're not embarrassed because it makes a major difference. I was quirky then, and I'm still quirky now. The, everything is like, you can find me in my office, they'll tell you I'm just very different. Okay, and then the next thing that my husband, I'll end with this, my son rather. This is a gal named Liz Kapperman, and the stories go on and on and on, and they happen all the time. Liz Kapperman, my son told me, he said he's in wound care, he said, there's a girl who paints. She's a quadriplegic, beautiful girl, hurt in a car accident when she was 18. She can move one muscle in her arm right here. 
So she ends up painting paintings. She don't want to live on disability. She don't want to be a burden to society. And I'm sitting there, and my son asked me three different times had I called about her paintings to carry them in the local section at Wonderworks. And I said, no, but I will go. I will go. So I'm traveling down a road. I don't know where I am. I just plug it in. I don't know what town we're going to. It's near Charleston. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, Siri goes, turn left, turn left. And I look up and I look to the right and there's Ladson Center. I would not been there but 30 years ago when I was supposed to go for my, inter where I went for my interview. God did not want me to go left, right. I started crying. I went left, I went in her house and I said, I'll get every one of your pictures and I will help you. That is what life is about. Life is about opening up. It's about realizing who you are. It's about being true to yourself. And the magic is really you. So those two things that you have in your head right now, they're going to be with you the rest of your life because that's who you are. And they're going to make that magic happen. And my staff can tell you, we think of things, we hear of things, we plan things, the phone starts ringing. And the magic ends up happening. So y'all been great. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you for listening to my Thank presentation. You, that was great, Christine. Um, we've got time for maybe one or two questions uh, or a final thought. If anybody has one, uh, we got just enough time so that you guys can still get to work. Anybody ready for a question? Or does anybody want to share a quirk? <laughs> Um, I, I got a question. You do a lot for the community, um, and you do a lot for these wonderful kids. How can we support what you do on a regular basis? You know, the best thing that you can do is if a child comes up to you and ends up to giving you an idea or talking to you about an idea or he, they're an entrepreneur or something like that, don't turn them away. Listen to them. Send them to, you know, a coach. Be their coach. Tell them to go to their teacher, tell them to go to somebody at Sunday school, tell them to go to their scoutmaster or their junior league or whatever, the, whoever it is, what organization they're in. Don't say no. I mean, I'm serious, y'all. I, just, I, just, I was just talking about it earlier. When you, when you open yourself up, magic ends up happening. So that's the best thing that you can end up doing. We have two large events every year, and they're for four children's charities. And one of them is Elf Stravaganza. It's coming up the second Saturday in November. And slime and spin, spinners are very hot this year. Fid, fidgety type of toys. We're selling a lot of those. And I always forget to talk about Wonderworks, but um, that's why I put those little coupons and catalogs in your, in your chairs, and we have four locations. But um, we have that event, and it's in Mount Pleasant. And then the other one is the Cooper River Bridge Run Kids Run in Wonderfest. And that's the day before um, the Cooper River Bridge Run. And everything is free at all these events. And we foster children's charities. And we encourage the children to be role models. You know, and other kids look up to them. So if y'all could want to attend, tell your friends, come to it, attend them. Those are great. The second Saturday in November, it's from 9 to 2, and it'll be in Mount Pleasant this year. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely help you share that. Thanks. Thanks, um, Stephen. Okay, you great. you have a quirk or a question? Yeah, one question here. As an entrepreneur, a lot of times you are starting out and you hear the word no a lot, and it seems like along the way you heard the word no a couple of times. What was it that you had within you that you could share with us that kept you pressing forward until you finally got that yes? You know, it's perseverance. If you're an entrepreneur, you know it, and you hear no more than you hear yes, and that's just how it is, but you have to keep pressing through that. You have to persevere, and it's that thing in your gut that says you don't quit. You keep asking questions. You go find the next person. It's like a little link of networks, but everything's about relationships, and the relationships are so important. You never know the person. I'm serious. You never know the person who is the brown-eyed guy squatting at, at the grocery store like we just saw there, or the, you know, whatever, or the guy with the gas tank or whatever. 
those people can make a difference. They seriously can. And people are dropped in front of you time after time again. I'll give you this tip. If you see the same person being dropped in front of you several times in a month or several times in several months, that's meant to be, and you've got to talk to that person. You've got to see why they're there because they will keep coming back around. I don't know why, but it always happens. Right, Evan? That's awesome. Um, Christine, can you do one final plug? Where can we find your store? Oh, your most recent four, one. Four locations, right in the smack dab in the middle of the city market, down in Charleston. It's over there at the Coburg Dairy Cow Shopping Center beside Petco and Harris Teeter. And then we follow Harris Teeter and Mount Pleasant by Bell Hall. And then also if you're at Freshfield Village, it's right there smack dab in the middle of the green in Kiowa. Excellent. Great. Thanks. And Christine, you can shop online. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you all for being here Great. as well. Thank you.